Pontiac 350 power. If we can get it to run right. What do you think? Will it run and make power? Hello everybody, I'm Rich Holdner, and as always, welcome to the channel. Today it's all about Pontiacs. I have this 350 Pontiac in the back of my truck, and it runs like this. As we can see from our flames, it has at least one bad hole. The question is, can I fix it? Can it be fixed? And if it can be fixed, can I actually make some power with a Pontiac? So the first thing we did is take this motor and install it up on the dyno and crank it over and see if it works. Here's what we got. Okay, before we can get this thing started, what I wanted to do is I had to flush all the coolant out of here because we don't want that obviously going into the water source for the dyno. So get all of that out. I got a couple more things to take a look at. We'll take a look at cranking compression, make sure that all we have, uh, you know, cranking compression in all the holes. Take a look at the oiling, make sure that we have, you know, oil pressure when we're cranking this thing around. And then finally, we'll see if we can start it up. Because we don't have an electric water pump for the Pontiac, we're gonna to have to drive this mechanically, and I'll show you. I'm gonna put another pulley on here with a short belt that just connects those two. That way we can run the water pump while we're running the motor on the dyno. So we got our belt on, got our pulley. It's gonna line up all the holes. Put in our bolts, tighten it up. See, we've got a tension on the belt. Now, that crank pulley will dry the water pump pulley and we'll have cooling. The nice thing about hooking up an HEI already has the coil. All we have to do is run one power wire. You can see it says battery. So we hook that up to our power source up on the dyno. That way, when we turn the ignition on and off, it says aux one on it. Oh, we can shut the motor off. Should work out good. The intake manifold on this is an Edelbrock. Um, it's, they work pretty well. The, the cast iron unit for these Pontiacs actually works a little bit better. It's a really good piece. But normally I would run a quadrajet on it, but we don't have one right now. So we have this 750 Holly, which is gonna be, I'm sure, more than enough for this. This is probably a low compression 350. I don't know really the history about it. It's a 69 block and it has 47 heads on it. It has some sort of unknown camshaft on it. But this will be an order of carburetor just to get this thing started and find out, you know, if the thing's even gonna run. Okay, we've got this thing started up. I'll show you the thing was running and idling, but it seemed like it was running very well and also tried to load it in. It's kind of misfiring. So what I'm doing is taking this temperature gun and we're going around to all the holes and finding out how much temperature we have. And in doing that, we found out this one right here is a lot lower than all the rest. So we're gonna take a look at that cylinder and you know kind of see what's going on. So the first thing that we try in our diagnostics is because this cylinder was down and not firing or something, what we did was take the plug out of this cylinder and move it over to this cylinder. And so what we're gonna find out is putting a good plug in here, does it cure this and move the problem over to here? If it does, we know it's a bad plug that's easy to change. If not, then we have to look at the next thing, which might be 
we'll swap the plug wires, we'll do a compression test, we'll take the valve cover off, maybe look at the rockers and see what's going on there. But all we're doing is trying to eliminate all the possibilities and find out what's going on. Okay, we tried a new spark plug. We even tried switching the wires from one to the other, but this cylinder still has no heat. So now it's time to, we're gonna pull the valve cover and see what's going on. We'll take all the plugs out and do a compression test and just see how everything looks. So we got our valve cover off. The things we're kind of looking for is, let's make sure that the rockers are all adjusted. You know, so the number of threads sticking out is kind of the same. We're just looking for anything unusual. Are these loose? Is a push rod broken? Is a valve spring broken? And we'll kind of check compression and hopefully it doesn't have you know a bad head gasket or a bad valve or something we'll check that check the install lights on these and see if we can see anything but okay and try to diagnose this we're going to take a compression test on all the cylinders what we're looking for is not so much that they have a whole bunch of compression we're not looking for 200 or anything probably with the low compression mild cam i'm thinking that these are in the 150 range or so probably but we just want to make sure that they're all even so let's take a look and see this Take a look and see what we got here. Yeah, right, right, right kind of where I thought, right at 150. We'll check all the rest of them and see where they are. Just make sure that they're even. We can rule out compression as one of the problems. Now we're going to try some jetting. See in the rear, some jet extensions. That's the same. Just pull those jets out. We're going to go down two sizes. Try to lean it out a little bit. Okay guys, let's take a look and see what happened when we ran our Pontiac 350 of unknown origin. <laughs> we just know that when I got it, it was not running well. I'm happy that in fact it was running, but what we did was, you know, do a few things to help cure it. We did the basic deals, you know, spark plugs, uh, distributor cap and rotor. It already had good wires and stuff on it. We did a compression test on it, as you saw. But after getting the thing to fire evenly on all the holes, we went through a timing sequence and found out that there was indeed way too much timing, which is unusual, and back the timing down in steps and ended up making pretty good power. In fact, I make an, might make another video about what happened with the timing because it's kind of unusual. We don't normally see this. Usually we start out very low. We end up having to add timing. And actually the reverse happened here, which makes me think that maybe the damper has slipped or something or rotated. But I'm going to take a look at that, and if I find something, we'll maybe do another video. But here is the power curve when I ran the Holly carburetor, the brawler carburetor that you saw on it. And we just took it out of the cabin, basically, and ran it. And we had unknown jetting and stuff in it. We just put it on there, and guess what? <laughs> it actually worked fairly well. I'm going to show you the air fuel curve, because it was pretty rich. And as it turned out, 
leaning it out didn't show a big change in power, but we were able to produce 283.6, 284-ish horsepower with this 350. This has got to be a low compression deal with those 47 heads. I don't know what the camshaft is in here. I'm thinking that it's some kind of a stock cam. Maybe it's, uh, you guys let me know in the comments, is this thing maybe a... Uh, um, a Ram Air 3 or even smaller camshaft than this, but 335 foot-pounds of torque. But here's our first test. Here's what we did. Well, after taking a look at the air fuel, and again, I'm going to show you the air fuel curves, what we did was take some jetting out of it. So let's take a look at our jet change. This is before we did the jet change, and this is after we did the jet change. And as you can see, really kind of just minimal gains. I mean, this really is what happens when we run the thing back to back, you know, one run right after, right after another, and don't make any changes. We see a couple of horsepower change. You know, we can take a look, 336 in the foot pound. So maybe one or two foot pounds there, you know, kind of in the middle of the curve, but really nothing, 284.4, 283.7 or eight or nine. You know, you're talking about less than one horsepower. That's almost no power change at all. But now let's take a look and see what happens. I'm gonna show you what happens when we made the jetting change and it did indeed change the air fuel, but unfortunately it did not change the, the power. Okay, we've taken a look at the power. Now let's take a look and see what happened with the change in air fuel, because we did have a change in air fuel by changing our jetting. Unfortunately, as we saw with the power, it didn't really translate directly into gains, but this was our air fuel curve. And we run this with a 78-79 jet split. That's the carburetor, the way that it came out of the cabinet. We just installed it on the Pontiac 350 and ran it with the jetting. We didn't even know what it was until we actually made the jetting change. But this was the air fuel curve with our 78-79 jets. We started out at 11.3, dropped down as low as 10.2, and then picked back up to about 11.4 was the leanest that it got. So we were thinking, hey, it's in the low 11s and the 10s. We should definitely try jetting this thing and try to get some more power out of it. Here's what happened when we did our jet change. You can see here, we leaned it out up to 12 to 1. Started out as at 11.5. You can see it has the same basic shape as the pre-jetting, as the, as the larger jets did. That didn't change a, a lot. It started out, you can see here at 11.5 at 2700 RPM. The air fuel dropped down and then rose back up with engine speed, just like it did with the other jetting. So what we did with the jetting is basically make a universal change in the air fuel. We still had basically the same type of curve. But the interesting thing is we went from 11.2 up to 12.0 and didn't see any change in the power peak. So sometimes this is what happens. We like to think that, hey, it's a, it's a, at 11.2, we're gonna tune like 10 or 15 or 20 horsepower out of this thing. And sometimes it just does not work that way. And this is one of those examples. But our Richard Holder, please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. What would you guys like to see? What kind of tests you wanna see run on this Pontiac 350?